Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 13. They're actually using the right ticket this time. Week 6. It's our last set for this week. We got Randy. We got Ocelot. We don't have him for long. Everybody in the chat say goodbye, Ocelot, after this game. Um, presumably. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, like, I got, like, Thanos snapped, but it's happening, like, really slowly. It's kind of disturbing, actually. I ain't got no feet. We got LST. We got MKL, too. We got Randy, too. Hello. MK Ulti giving Boof a lot of credit. Immediately just going after both of his heroes there. Very daring. Giving both of your uh, bands out to to the Blackacre slash Boofus. When you got Iceman and Chris who heckin' loves Peru. That's true. But Chris is kind of hard to ban against, I think. He yeah. Plays a lot. Like, he's, he's like the uh, Toro of this league. He just plays, like, 15 heroes on roughly equivalent, like, uh, standing. First pick, Axe. And Snapfire to go with it. I like it. It's very brave to first pick Axe, but if you... Because there are things in this, in this game, there are things in this world that counter Axe really hard. In fairness, two things Axe doesn't want to see are out of the pool. There's still things like, you know, if they get a Viper, then every fight Axe is standing in the Viper goo. And he will be. He's just doing nothing. He's just standing there letting everybody beat the crap out of him while wondering why his life has led to this point. Necrophos. That's another guy Axe doesn't really want to see. Good. So who's fire first? Who fires which, uh, which infinitely scaling hero will uh, scale better in this game? We'll see. That's a great question. Ten seconds remaining. It's definitely who fires first there, though. I do think Necro has uh... Necro has a lot more ability to do something if he's fired Ooh, off first. Ban on Enigma. Yeah, that's, that's uh. A yep. Assuming they're four, that it's not an Axe three. Interestingly. MK ulti getting rid of the PL. I don't know if I'm down with that. I feel like PL into Axe is... Chris. Yeah. I feel like he just let it through anyway. Really? That's such a hard counter. Every game that we see Chris, he gets PL banned against him. So we gotta, we gotta keep that tradition going. That's true. I think they could've let it through here for sure. Like, what What are either of these two afraid of when it comes to PL? Like, if, if, if PL wants to go try and beat on Axe, good luck to him. No Void Spirit makes a lot more sense. LST looking at that uh, Nature's Prophet that's been Flare of the Week quite heavily recently. We've seen MK Ulti run it as well. That's yeah, true. You know what's weird is that everywhere else you see MK Ulti listed, there's a dash between the MK and Ulti, but not on their actual team name in the game. Oh. Interesting. Oh, you're right. Whenever I, I do the videos, I always uh, I always put the hyphen in, and sometimes I even make them all all uh, caps. Not this time though. Who do you think we're gonna be seeing for threes here over on uh, Lone Sniper Theory? Who's the I three on LST? The three. Yeah, it could be a Necro three. It could be a Necro two still. You can never really be too sure with Necro. I think he's flex at the moment. Dire team I am the Juggernaut. I will not be in this game. To be fair, in my experience, Grimstroke can also be a pretty solid flex. He can't really be a one, but he can definitely reach two if you give him enough space. I'm not even kidding about that. Grimstroke, played by someone who knows how to play Grimstroke right, with the all, like fully utilize his whole kit, far more deadly than you can ever. They recognize. just build like E-Blade Dagon and blow two people up at once. Radiant team pick. Requires a lot of farm, and you can't die in the. Ooh, good pick. Can't die in the early game. You have to super know what you're doing. Like you have to be a Grimstroke Dazzle? god. The pitch is like, Dazzle, I would assume. The first Probably. pick Axe into the into the third pick Dazzle to counter Necro potentially. That is big brain. I like that. Yeah. Ten seconds. Like they're not gonna bother banning it because they have already have Axe. So <laughs> a bit of a mind game there. I like it. I think MK Ulti is just using my how to beat princess notes. Actually, so far. <laughs> but this isn't PMA, guys. Just letting you know. 
want to work against LST. I feel like not quite as well. I don't know if uh, Chris is... I mean, I guess he usually likes to do the right-click turn brain off type, and Iceman does like to do the dash around and catch people type, so I guess it actually does still work here. Did my nuts get out? I gotta think about that. <laughs> Spirit Breaker, you made my knuckles bleed. That's a pretty good pick, actually. Yep, gonna be good at uh, zoning out the supports here, keeping them from being effective in the fights. Yep. If you can see Dazzle or see Snapfire, you can basically stop either of them from having much of an effect as if you if you Spirit Breaker's playing it right. No clue what position. That might be our three. We might be looking at Iceman Necro. Or it could be like the four Spirit Breaker. A little bit of a uh, last patch oh, I just... left over. <laughs> I just realized, imagine Grimstroke's ult with Spirit Breaker's uh, Nether Strike, Double Strike. Yeah. It's gonna be just, good. Just splits in half. Tries to charge, like, his, his like, upper half starts, like, doing, like, a two-handed walk the other way, and his legs are just running at you topless to the other. I was thinking more like, you know, he just, like, Ooh. splits down the middle. Double X into boat. Like, oh my god, level. that's... Double X has that's, a lot of potential, that's, that's scary. Not what I expected. That does, that's an interesting pick up there. That's it's also really making, not what I expected. It's also making this team look a little more defined. I think at this point it's 5-3-4-2. But it's still kind of hard yeah. to say. Radiant team back. Puck! Puck's going to have some doing? trouble this game at mid. Getting ones for less picks. Yep. Puck's definitely gonna have some trouble at the mid lane. Puck's gonna have a great, fun, wonderful time in this game once mid lane is over. Until then, it's gonna hoit to be Mickle. Will it? You can kinda dodge Tidebringer. It doesn't matter if you can kinda dodge Tidebringer if you're constantly blowing all your mana staying on the defensive and still going to inevitably be eating shots sometimes. And you're not until you don't six. Have to dodge. Just Dyer press C. You can't press C, but it's not gonna be it's not gonna be up twenty four seven is the thing. You're also, going to be need really... to do dodge it with illusory orb a lot. Not to mention uh, if you're gonna be using your E to dodge uh, Tidebringer, he's just gonna see you're doing that. He's gonna start faking his swings and he's gonna start throwing down uh, torrents right underneath you, so the second you come out of it you won't have time to get away. Right. Very common Kunkka tactics. The thing about Puck is Puck gets just Puck likes it when you have a hero that's only going to be coming at you like once every so often. You know, Puck likes it when you have to ult deal with Puck. Puck likes it when you when you have to, you know, use like a long cooldown ability to deal with Puck. Puck likes it when you have an ability that's only going to really do well for you under certain circumstances. What Puck does not like is somebody who can pretty consistently just keep the offense coming in and does a lot of alpha damage Radiant while they're doing it. When you get the uh, the Kunkka, who's going to have Tybringer up, just more often than you're going to be able to dodge, you're going to need Illusory Orb to deal with some of his stuff. When you've got the E, the, you know, the X marks the spot Ten that he can use to just have some fun with them. I, I just thought we're going to be seeing an Ursa 1. Five seconds remaining. On which team? Uh, Lone Sniper Theory. I think they can make it work. Roar! Especially with Grimstroke. Ursa. Like, Grimstroke and Ursa is scary as hell. Yeah, it answers, Bloodseeker, it answers actually. the axe pretty well as well. Like, it answers the axe both in lane and in the rest of the game. Like, it doesn't matter how much armor you have, Ursa does, does not care really about that. It's a good I'm contingency pick to do an axe. It's a great and perfect contingency. They need a counter pick for Axe, pure and simple. They got the Blood Seeker. Well, I definitely like. They're committed now. Yeah, I definitely think I like the uh, the Ursa concept more. Gets kited by Puck, but you have answers for Puck. He's not the whole world, and nobody else really wants to see that. I tell you, what's the absolute saddest thing in this world, right? You drop the Snapfire ult on Ursa, any ult. Five seconds remaining. And it does, even if the BKB is not up, no damage. You get the axe call on Ursa after the ult is out. You do no damage, and he kills you. Yes. 
I'd say Huskar would have been a good fit here, but the existence of Necro and Bloodseekers. Yeah, hard no, no there's one. no way you get an Huskar here. Yeah, I think there's, there's too much thought on the puck here on that lineup. Too much looking at puck. Puck is not the threat. Okay, okay, listen, 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 listen. Okay. MK Ulti is not a mid built <laughs> lineup. And now you got the Wraith King. Wraith King's interesting in this game. Last set, I said Wraith King is not a general purpose hero. He's going to definitely have more of a sort of niche. More of a niche application, right? I think this uh, this type of scenario is definitely filling into that niche. Pretty much everybody on LST, with the exception of Necro, is all about, you know, the, the five seconds of fun, right? They're all about getting all the fun out as fast as humanly possible. You know, they, they want to take these really short fights and then just get the hell out of here. Wraith King doesn't let you do that. You can drop everything you want to on Wraith King. It does not matter if he's going to reincarnate. And I guess that does to a degree justify the PL ban as well. I still think he could probably just suck it up and go into it and be fine, but... If you don't want to run the risk of him just being mana broken before he gets shard, that's fine. But yeah, I think the Wraith King here... I, I can tell you this, I like this Wraith King a lot more than I like the, the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker is going to be really good at Puck and the supports and really not much else. Whereas the Wraith King, I think, is going to be able to run Roughshod on quite a lot of those people, especially considering that, you know, really, at the end of the day, they don't have a real tank. They have Necro. Necro's a very tanky guy, but Necro's only a very tanky guy in terms of this. This is how you tank as Necro. You see this? This doesn't matter. For all intents and purposes, this does not exist. This also, is your Also, kind bar. of everyone can be tanky with the uh, damage reduction from bow, right? So, yeah. Sort of that's that's true. True. I mean... That's true. Kind of. Everybody can be tanky, but that's damage delay, not damage nullification. Yep. <laughs> Which means that you're going to get a few more seconds of fun before the uh, million and millions of uh, just shock right-click damage falls right on your head. Doesn't care about the Necro that much. I mean, he cares about him as second life. Doesn't care about the Grimstroke that much. Again, second life. Doesn't care about the Bloodseeker. Like, they either have to drop too much to get him to reincarnate or save so much that they're not going to get him to do it, basically. Like, they, they, they don't really have the tools necessary to get him down twice that easily because of how their team is set up. And that's sort of the niche I was talking about with, uh, with, the, with the Wraith King. Begins. Battle begins, and it's mundane. Yep. Just split the runes, nothing happens. Let's do the roll call. So, on Lone Sniper Theory, pause one, we got Chris. Who I can love Peru. On the Bloodseeker. You know, he get, he gets upset that I still say that about him, but on the other hand, your sponsor is Peru, Chris, so explain that. Pause two. We've got the captain of the team, Iceman, who's sponsored by Ronan, on the Kunkka. Pause three. We've got Blackacre, formerly known as Bufus, loves Haley, on Necro. Pause 4, we've got Shockwave, who's sponsored by Dota Buff, on that Spirit Breaker. And Pause 5, currently getting a little bit messed up in the jungle. We got Bliss, sponsored by Mob Midas, who's uh, on Team Toxic on the Grimstroke. Nice. On the other hand, on MK Ulti, Pause 1, you got Lambert, who's on the Skeleton King. Pause 2, you got Mickle Mickle on the Puck. Mickle the Pickle, Mickle the Puckle, you know what I'm saying? Captain of the team. You can already see here Puck very low very quickly. Um, pause three. You've got Godlike Matt, sponsored by Red Bull, on the, uh, on the axe. Who called his own game last week, if you didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't. Pause four. 
don't know why I just went to top to look for that. You got Magician standing in on the Snapfire. And pause five, you got Peaches on the Dazzle. Can I be rude to run over me? No. <laughs> okay, I won't then. So since I cannot be run mood to run over mate, I will not say that I do feel like run over mate to magician is probably a trade in LSD's favor. Got a courier oh. from Snapfire. Yep. It's not gonna be much in his favor. Pay for it. Okay. It's down here. Oh my God! It's gonna be for blood. Yep. That's a really good ink soul. Yep. I've talked before about how with the Grimstroke, it's better to go from 0 to 1 than from 1 to 2. And this sort of lane is exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that. The only thing Bloodseeker is really lacking in his kit in lane phase is the ability to just cleanly stun people. Grimstroke is at right to him and he turns into a right menace and you can see it there. That That is a situation where like any other lane comp really and Magician's not in much danger. But, yeah, put these two together, and suddenly it gets I mean, pretty bad. Yeah, the hero combination's pretty uh, straightforward. Bloodseeker punishes you for doing anything, and Grimstroke punishes you for doing nothing. Right. If you let the ghost sit on your face and beat you up, it blows up for a ton of damage and keeps the silence and refreshes its cooldown instantly. If you uh, decide not to move, do nothing, you get hit by the ink swell. It's a no-win situation. You get nothing. This is going to be I a dare very... say this combo rivals uh, old Coddle and PL back in the day. Right. This is going to be a very difficult uh, very difficult scenario for God like Matt. I don't know if he's very used to the situation like this, where you're really almost looking... Not only is he in with somebody he hasn't really queued with before, but you're really almost against something that in operation is more like an off lane than a safe lane. It is still a safe lane, don't get me wrong. By, by no means is this not. But this is definitely going to... You know, they're going to be playing this... Much more like an offlane. The good news is I do think this loses some of its edge as time goes on until 6. When it hits 6, you are going to die. Accept it now. Yeah, the sooner you the sooner you, uh, you just figure out that that's going to happen, the better. Axe, is grateful. Axe was grateful for one second. Probably Magic. not good to uh, throw out the... Uh-oh. Uh, Grimstork might be in some trouble. Nope, never mind. He's fine. fine. No cookie. Meanwhile, up here in the top lane, Lambert is pretty much having an okay day. So far, mid is pretty much going as predicted. Iceman is fairly firmly on top. Mikkel is consistently sitting somewhere half health or left. And Mage just randomly died again at bot. I think you could probably guess how that's gone by now. Probably got pincered off, maybe tried to type a courier. Oh, it's a lot of damage. Next to the Oop, dodge. Oh, even dodge the follow up the tie bringer. Very good. Wow. Use positioning good. for it. Very good, but still has to route, unfortunately. <laughs> Smurf detected. <laughs> nice man's uh -oh. actually good, so there you go. Dazzle's in deep. Is he gonna be able to get away from this? Dazzle's A okay. They do not want to chase down here because they're worried about rotations. Both of the guys in the offlane were dark there. They showed up as a very dead spirit breaker. Would that be worth it? Probably not, but you know, you can't you can't just just knock it out the record, just not worth the risk. You know, in the time of the route, Iceman went up to 15 last hit advantage. A lot of damage coming up both ways here. I think Axe is... Oh, the Ooh. spins! Oh, that's... Magician trying so hard to keep it off Matt. Yep, Ultimately a success. Blast. And now M Matt's Two region... Bracers. Yeah, Matt's region right now is absolutely insane. You got the two bracers and you got the ring of health. Yeah, two two bracers at before six minutes with the ring of health. His farm is... is uh... Not huge, but that's a lot of money to have. Right, for a lane like this, that's, you know, it's like a smile that's on almost face. enough for a blink dagger, and I don't like that fact, but the, the, it's keeping him alive versus Bloodseeker, and at high right. HP. That is punishing. Matt, uh, infamously, Absolutely. doesn't like to, uh, to get the blink dagger sometimes. 
I completely understand it. Yeah, I get it too. I do think um, sometimes people do get oh, wow, over. Wow, that came out of nowhere. Yeah. Let's actually see the replay of that. I was watching the scuffle at top. But... Uh, this is just pretty simple, I think. Yep. That's basically going to be their last chance to get a real decisive kill in this lane. Once Bloodseeker hits 6, it's just basically going to be leave or die. She will not be able to TP away from the, uh... You will not be able to TP away from the Bloodseeker roll because of the Inkswell. Iceman is just going to randomly show up here and, uh, just get a kill. Goodbye, Matt. Bad news is, is that that was just a that was a pretty decent sized kill. Got a up. Uh, oh. Got a pretty big target. The good news is is that it gave Puck the time to go up top and do this. Oh. And in that situation, Mickle wins. He got a kill to support his uh, top laner, who's going to be able to just. Comp keep farming up, get a lot done in that position. Iceman showed up to get a kill for somebody who's going to peak in 20 minutes, you know. When you have two ganks on the safe lane, the later game safe lane is the one where the gank meant more. Especially if the down mid gets it. You guys forget how to talk or what? I mean, I, th I thought this was a three-man dash. No, I was just, I was just watching... <laughs> Or anything, no reincarnated six. As yeah. kind of I mean, I'm eating on the he's, side, he's so he's under no pressure. Ooh, Ooh, first sight of the game. <laughs> Beginning yeah. of the end, more like it. The uh, the Wraith King here, he definitely is going to need to stay well away from this lane if he's not going to run reincarnated like he knocks yeah. out the sentry there. If I, will, I will relent that while I do believe you should always take your ultimate with every hero just about when you hit 6, there is a very few edge cases and Wraith King is one of them. Right. If your lanes are being won and you have a significant like overall team advantage or you at least have a method of keeping yourself from getting jumped, like good detection, good wards, uh, very responsible teammates, it's safer to go for it. But I... Yep. I reluctantly agree that Wraith King can afford it. Yeah, in this game, I think he can. He needs to stay the hell away from Necro, though. That's a super bad idea to let the two of them uh, be near him together like this. Usually you go 1-3-4, uh, but Lambert is okay. opting for 1-4-4 four, four instead to kind of hasten his farm in the jungle. Iceman rotate to bot again. Then again, uh, if you don't really have any way of knowing Wraith King has his ult until you've actually tried to kill him. Right. So if yeah. you're staying off the radar out of sight, then you can also play a little more subtly and get away with it too. So there's right. some merit to it. They definitely need to get more vision up in this jungle though. He's very gank vulnerable when he doesn't have that. If he's gonna stay in the jungle, that's all well and good. It's probably one of the better things he can do if uh Oh, that's so sad. Whomp! But at least he got the sentry. It wasn't worth it. Crimstroke just told you a lie, that was definitely good for this offlane. Like, lost the sentry here, but literally, what does that matter right now? Definitely overcommitted to that on Bliss's part. Kunkka's lead over Puck is getting pretty enormous, last hit wise. Let's get the yep. net worth chart, though. Now, Worth Chart's telling a different story. He is getting a lot of money from the kills. Oh, okay. Also, this wacky thing started while we were looking at that. Oh, he whiffed! Oh, no, baby, that ain't so good. The axe does outlive the... Uh, oh, that was actually very lucky. Spearbreaker was about to not charge on the, on the snap yeah, also, there. Also, speaking of lucky, wow, those bashes. Yeah, that's a lot of luck for Shockwave. Like, his charge gets redirected yeah. to the right target last second, and, uh, gets a bunch of bashes there. Which is good. It's ultimately still not great. You did still lose Bloodseeker, but at least you recouped your losses to a degree. Puck. Bloodseeker is still ahead in farm with a good chunk of his team. The uh, loss was minimal, honestly. Oh, Spearbreaker doesn't have six. Bro, get, get your six already. Spirit Breaker without six at this point in the game needs nothing. 
Empire's top tower is under attack. Dazzle. Yeah, it would mean a lot more if it's charge and get dodged, but... Oh yeah. I mean, I think it doesn't really mean anything with how far that charge was going, even if it doesn't get charged, like... Or it doesn't get dodged, like... You hit Puck, you're not going to stun Puck long enough for the torrent to come out and kill, so... What did he really do? No, he should have he should have stolen the last hit there. Come on, Snapfire, why? All right, jungle items started dropping. Looks like uh, a little while ago. Um, what do we have for those? I see a trusty shovel on Kunkka. Can't. I don't oh, think we this is a great dive? time to look. Yeah. I wasn't gonna... expecting to just try to go for it, but they are fully committed to this. Yeah, they're diving. Oh, oh no! This could oh, be bad. No! Oh, the oh, double, double rupture. Double rupture. Okay. But they can't, Magician they can't pursue is causing it. so many problems. Yeah, you just went straight into the back line. GLM's probably gonna get sight here. GLM. Yeah, he's gonna get yep. sight. Oh, just barely. Just a few frames more. And a uh, guy like Magic gets to pull out. Mikkel's also oh, gonna no. die. Okay. Misses the combo, but that doesn't matter. That is good for LST. They did have to divert a lot of resources here, though. Yeah. The good news for, uh, the good news here is that while that was happening, Lambert just hit 100 last hits. Lambert is him. doing really good with keeping his farm efficient. Yeah. Also, uh, Axe just goes top, gets a very casual calling blade. We'll say this much, I don't like the Vanguard on Axis game. I know Vanguard on Axis is like the traditional what you do, but I feel like it's definitely way better to at least go for the hood here. I mean, consider this. Vanguard is not even really that good against the, like, one physical damage guy you're going to be worried about right now in Kunkka. It's okay against Bloodseeker, but that's not how he's going to kill you this game. It doesn't do anything to the Necro, it doesn't do anything about the Grimstroke, doesn't do anything really about the Spirit Breaker. But if you get the hood, you can at least pop that when you think you're about to get scythed, you know? The charge coming in, a magician. Okay, I turns it. around there. I gotta say, for a team that's traditionally very heavy on the, uh, on the vision, it seems like the MK ulti vision in this game isn't great. You got a ward here. That's alright. I think this is their clear, only ops on the map. Oh, there's another one behind the T1. That, that is the two ops they have on the entire map right now. That's tough against Spirit Breaker. Uh, Dazzle, I'd stay under that tower if I were you. He ran, into, he ran too far away from his team. Oh, nice it. timing on the stun. Good luck, he crit. Oh. Yep. Oh, that was close. That was real close. What's, I think it's, uh, you just crit on a cooldown, right? Wraith King, guaranteed yeah. crit? Yeah. Okay. So it's not random. Not random, but the timing was really lucky. Yeah, the timing of the show, the timing of the, uh, just how that went down. Illusion. Plus it's randomly dying. You can get in Dove here. Things started off looking really good for, uh, LST here, but it's starting- Coil? It's starting to get a little bit more, uh, no blood for you, a little bit more hairy for them. Out of wonder though, uh, so far early game, it's going pretty well, but I'm beginning to have doubts that mid game is going to be very different. Right. The, uh, the big thing is, I mentioned at the, at the top of this, like, Puck is going to really suffer in lane, but do start doing far better in the mid game and so far for the most part that seems to be about what we're seeing had uh, had a bad spill there but already it's getting to the point where nobody really wants to mess around with pucks there goodbye Grimstro just gonna very casually eat it here Aw, oh, Yules through the boat wait wait okay interesting we're gonna hold here for a second okay Alright. My man. <laughs> Unfortunate. Ooh. Good charge. Okay, boat that buff, is a really uh, good charge. The boat buff almost let his team survive that, but uh 
Not with Not everyone quite. behind it. Oh, okay. oh no, coming out. Good forward play by Mikkel. Second the silence and he's dead. That is just sad. And unfortunately, while Godlike Matt does not get the culling blade there, perhaps somebody even worse for, for to get the kill got it. And yeah, so far this is really coming down pretty much like the prediction in pick phase. The MK ulti lanes didn't go great, but when they're starting to come together, especially Pocket starting to really take off. Also, uh, yep. Axe got Yulzed and didn't get hit by a bow. That was... Oh, okay. a pretty decent sized call, there's no follow-up to this. Yeah, that's a sick call, I don't think his team was with him there. Yeah. Did get the pretty blank. Kind of, it kind of intimidates. Gonna get the blame mail next, which is bad news for Kunkka, pretty bad news for the Bloodseeker, but I don't think anybody else cares that much about it. Which is the good news, this isn't a game where the axe call is gonna mean that much because of who Chris ended up on. It's quite an unusual pick for him, I will say. Okay, this could be a big call if Jolin blinks. Oh, he got Grimstroke. That bar okay, gets away so early. Oh, uh, the Reaper's like... Oh, Reaper's barely, barely Yeah, barely uh, doesn't get it. This Dream Coil is such a big one! Oh, Lambert. About three hits the Necro. Okay, maybe not... Not worth it for Necro. Yeah. Yep. You threw a shot at Necro. You deserve nothing. I cannot imagine being happy as LST after that fight. The Race King is 3k net worth ahead of second place. Right. There's that. This is what happens when you have a more defensive support in your lane as Wraith King, and he is therefore allowed to pretty much just farm at his leisure. I don't know what I could possibly be referring to, Cataly, by saying that, but you know. <laughs> oh, Kanka, you know not what you're walking into, my man. Oh no. Oh, he figured no. it out pretty fast, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, and he took three. No, dude, don't chase the Dazzle. Don't chase the Dazzle, you fool! Well, okay. The classic Patriots bait. Bear Breaker! Ooh. Oh my god, dude. Heart Attack City. <laughs> Matt waiting on the wings there. Just. Please, guys. Please. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. They are telegraphing over on Radiant Team so hard how much they want to get a kill. How right. eager they are to just try to dive for it. They are... If it were any more telegraph, it would have been sent through snail mail, man. For Sipash. Interesting. <laughs> Not enough cash to charge the... get out of here. Yeah. Oh, or he's just gonna go back here. here. Oh! Boat swing and a miss. Oh, this no, is a big snapple. Oh. Goodbye, Necro. Oh, no, he actually gets the... Uh, he's gonna get out, back uh, up in the oh. back, though. Oh! Ooh. Okay. Narrowly misses the calling blade. He's still gonna die. Uh, the axe blinked his neck and spliced his neck, I guess. Yeah. We're just messed up shift Q, who knows? Well, still doesn't matter. Wow. That went tits up real quick. Yeah, it feels like it's been so long since LSC got a kill at all, let alone on anybody important now. And it really hasn't been, in all truth, but, like, it sure feels like it, doesn't it? Quite a bit, yeah. Honestly, this game, it's only barely going to be cresting, uh, yeah, just a little after 19 minutes already. But it feels like this has been gone on for 30. That's how farmed Lambert yeah. is. Yeah. They really, for a team that feels like they have some uh -oh. pretty good ability to, uh, uh nope. yeah, okay, nope. never mind. no blink on the, on the Skeleton King yet. For a team that it feels like has a lot of good ability to just close and gank the guy, he really didn't do that early game, and now he's just going out of control. Out of control. Yeah. I feel like um, rather than trying to focus on the picks on Axe and Puck, which didn't really go anywhere anyway, it definitely would have been better for them to just play offensively into the farming spots to scan MKLT. Not on MKLT on LST. Cliff. Middle and Pock dodges the spear breaker charge. Dyer's not that it would have. Yeah, not that it does Hunter anything. Anyway. Right yeah. And Hex just chops Grimstroke in half in the back of the line. 
I'm really surprised Puck didn't go in on that. I am not surprised that it ultimately doesn't matter, though. Yeah. It's absolutely not what I expected. Six uh, damage on the Nessa now. Kind of is what I expected, honestly. And again, this is very sad for Bloodseeker because it's like, A, he literally doesn't answer Wraith King in the slightest. If anything, Wraith King answers him about a million times better. And B, um, he's the early game core that is watching this early game fall to pieces. Something has to change on LST and fast because like another five minutes of this and I don't think there's a path anymore unless MKLT really throws. What they need for a solid team fight win is they need Axe to be caught out of position. They need Puck to be die in the first second of a fight. Lord. And they need nobody important to be caught in the Axe queue. And Snapfire has to be in a position to be prevented from ulting. Oh, oh the Reaper Scythe! Axe is gonna go down anyway. And that Still is the first it, big kill Still it, but it's denied while, the but... Reaper's charge. Yep. Oh, oh no, Dallas is gonna eat it now. Oh, oh good shot on Puck! But Necro screwed it over! Oh, it's gonna get bad now. Goodbye, Chris. Oh, there goes Bloodseeker. Goodbye, Iceman, maybe? Yep, goodbye, Iceman. Oh, my Chris! Lambert is officially uh, very out of control. Oh no, oh no. Oh. Well, the good news is that they didn't walk away with nothing for it like the last few fights, but... I'm gonna be honest, man. Lambert is walking around like he's got the world's biggest dick, and I think he's living it. Yeah, right now, it looks like a gigantic slug is walking down the mid lane, right? There's just a tunnel. A perfectly rounded tunnel. About this long. And a bunch of bodies filling up the sides of it. And it's crazy because it's Skeleton King. Like you'd think he wouldn't even have a dick, right? But not here. Incorrect. Radiance Middle Tower. Uh, Lambert is. Part. Lambert is showing off right now. I'm convinced this man is having the time of his life. He has no pressure, no fear. He isn't even remotely concerned. Yeah, this is this the guy Lambert is game. exuding raw confidence. The only thing that's missing is a Midas. I'm honestly considering how his early game went. I'm a Midas. little surprised he didn't get one. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't go for a rape here. This dude's insane. Oh, that was a... That was a good yul, but timing. it doesn't mean anything, unfortunately. Oh. Okay. And so wins They've the tail of the Iceman. Ice yeah. He does have the BKB out here, but he just voted absolutely nothing. I think this is the 9 second BKB on Chris. So boy, it sure would be bad if he died. And Iceman God, died. Lambert is uncontrollable in this game. What can you even do? Ow, yeah! Boy, nothing. This is I over. I don't think it's killable. Like, this I is your boy over. Right here and be safe right now. This is over the hills. Through the woods. This is gone, gone, gone. It's going right for T4th, and it's really hard to see any help of stopping it, though. LST is going to at least whiff it out. For some reason. Uh, I don't know, I think you just kind of let them take at that point, right? Like, reasonably? And I've called that before, and I've been wrong, but for some reason I don't think, uh... One, a Bloodseeker who's one half of a Skeleton King is going to turn this game around for some reason. Yeah, here goes the man soloing Roche. Okay, maybe it not. It's nearly finished though. AC. Yeah, why solo and Snapfire can look at it now? Yeah. Doesn't even want the Aegis. Matt, who's the only person. <laughs> As if I needed died. more yeah. of this. Lambert doesn't give a flying damn about what's going on. When's the last time they even popped this reincarnation? It has to be a long time at this point, right? I don't know what he was thinking, Traded. Yeah. He was like, oh, I'm gonna go beat up. Never mind. 
Yeah, he was thinking of going and killing Bloodseeker, I think. But honestly, yeah. it's a tier one. They, he realized, nah, I don't even care. Chris this man is. Finish the T1. He's, he's scared of setting foot near that T1 because he doesn't want anyone to show up and blow him up. Speaking of getting blown up, uh, Spirit Breaker's. Okay, he's fine. On one hand, Spirit Breaker is fun. On the other hand, Grim just dropped all of his saves, making it happen. Ooh, nice Inkswell. I wonder what that says. Or Stroke of Fate, not Inkswell. Oh. Uh, we got a problem. We got a problem. Yeah, we sure got a goddamn problem, alright. Five are up, and they just casually took a Rax and lost zero for it. Oh, Ooh, yeah. BKB popped on Koka. He's going for the kill. He wants Axe. But that's such a waste of time. He's got Aegis. He's got Aegis, and he's got the Shell Grave. At least they're gonna oh, get the a waste of a Reapers. We're gonna get the waste of a Reapers, though. I don't think so. Oh no. Yes, you get the charge if you pop Aegis. But uh, uh, I cannot say that terribly matters. And look who's back. Yeah, they did finally pop the reincarnate on the. Uh, oh, those game. crits! Oh, the cookie ultra kill! Come on, Bloodseeker, give him that Rampago, do it! He's, he's not waiting for it. it. He's crazy. He's he's got grave. He can do it. Mickle stole uh, the kill. No. Oh. Report Mikkel. I quit! <laughs> Report it! <laughs> He's gonna talk shit about you. Oh my god, the tragedy! Greek tragedy! <laughs> set up only to fail! The game was rigged from the start! Report Mikkel. <laughs> well! You know. Sometimes people like to talk about my takes, but I think that one just went exactly how we called it, right? Like that was Lambert gave him their one. Yep. Yep. You know, I I mentioned at the start of the game, you have uh, you have a good answer to the rest of the lineup with Wraith King. You have a good answer to five people really with Wraith King. You have a good answer to one people with the Bloodseeker, and the one person was not Wraith King. It messed with Puck early on. And it messed with Axe up, you know, pretty well t too for a while. But the problem is even early game, he just couldn't stop the Skeleton Gang. If there was any realistic hope for them to do anything here, a few things need to change. Bufus needs to build more defensively, and they need to go after Wraith King earlier. Yeah, he didn't do either of those things. Boof is still kind of building here like he was winning. The Yules ended up doing him really more harm than good. I understood why he got it, but I think he saved two people on MK Ulti and zero on his own team through the game, basically. Um, and besides that, I mean, this is a match that's pretty hard to analyze. It's just LST yeah. got rolled up, chewed up, spit out. Yep. All right, ready for the awards? Yeah, why not? Sure. I mean, you're about to disappear anyway, so... Yep, might as well get this out of the way. Alright, uh, Kunkka. My man, I hate to say it, you have the... expected the most out of, performed the least award. Like, I, I hate to say it, but yeah, I he, mean... he really did not have the ability to shine here. It wasn't even his fault. Just no. did not have the chance. Yeah, I mean, it just kind of came down to this. I do think he made some, some tactical blunders. Again, if he pressures the safe lane rather than the offlane. If he ganks on the Wraith King rather than ganking on the Axe two different times, we might be looking at a different story. I do think there was a tactical blunder there. But besides yeah. that, I mean, it just came down to this. He won mid, and that's great. He just didn't parlay that success into anything, and I don't think he won it quite enough to matter. Agreed. I mean, he's Definitely sitting on barely agree. more money than the uh, MK Ulti support line, what can I tell you? Now, on to Shock over on Spirit Breaker. Car crash in motion. He can't look away. He was incoming. He definitely made an impact. That's all I'm going to say. But, uh. Mo uh mostly impacts on his here. own skull. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the uh, concussion award. The crash test Plus, dummy uh, award. Crash test dummy award. Yeah, there you go. All right, now we move on to Chris on Bloodseeker. Can I elaborate I'm... on that before we move to Chris? <laughs> sure. 
Didn't get enough. Um, there are some supports where you can have that Stepford support type life. Spirit Breaker is not one of them. Having 4k net worth and level 11, which is four below the lowest, the second, like the lowest level on MK ulti, right? That is not a hero where you can do that and get away with it. You literally just are nothing but a wave clear at this point in the game. You cannot kill anybody. You cannot stun anybody. You can't do anything. You're just too far written out. 4k net worth. Literally phase boots and a bracer. Cut pair of braces. That's all Spirit Breaker has. You need more than that. You just simply do. Like at least an urn or something, you know? Level 11 after using two books too. That is not a pretty look. Yeah. Anyway, on to Chris on Bloodseeker. You, my friend, get the tried the hardest award on your team, in my opinion. You were in almost every fight. You were there to try and kick ass. Unfortunately, you just you were outperformed. Simply outpicked. speaking, this this isn't even a matter of a little bit, a little bit outpicked. But you you really did have an unfortunate uphill battle to work against, and you've made yeah. a good effort. But you, you get the tried the hardest award. Necrophos. That's uh, Black Acre had... slash Bufus. Yeah. Well, fortunately for them, they receive the least impactful award, in my opinion. Yeah. No Reaper Scythe until the late game even mattered, and the few stacks he did get didn't... Like, there was no snowballing to be had the lane he was in and in the situations he got himself into. Yeah, for the record, he has three Reaper Scythe, and the last one comes off of an Aegis pop. That happened, like, two minutes before the Ancient Blue. Yeah, that is not great. To be no. fair, he had really hard counter with Dazzle on the enemy team, but he wasn't yeah, always you're, present. You're not going to get any sense with Dazzle. No. So, yeah. yeah, there was definitely... But the sad thing is, there was one scythe that got cancelled by by the Shallow Grave. There's just no opportunities to scythe otherwise, basically. Um, and... the, big, the big thing is, I feel like, like I said, I just don't feel, feel like he built this one right. Just, you know, this is the kind of build, maybe accepting the Yules, this is the kind of build you get when you have, you know, eight Reaper Scythes. Not eight, necessarily. Let's say you, you're coming out of lane with a couple of Reaper Scythes. At, like, you know, ten minutes, you have, like, four or five. You know what I mean? Not, mm -hmm. I am coming out of lane with one Reaper Scythe, and I'm never going to get one for the rest of the game, basically, you know? Yep. I'm going to give the not-as-planned award to Grimstroke, who... You definitely went for it with your ability combos. You tried, but the timing of these events and the fact that you were typically the first to die in a lot of these exchanges... Yeah, he usually died before the exchange. Matt did a really good job just writing the Grimstroke out of this game, and it really just came down to... It eventually, it really was just to the point... He's level 11 at the end of the game. Again, like I said like you I said before, I... You were I, expecting uh, the fight. Unfortunately, the fight was expecting you. I talked about a lot about this with the combination being Grimstroke on Backdoor Boys back in Season 12. Grimstroke, again, is really not one of the heroes. You know, money, like, money's great if you can get it. It's better on Grimstroke than a lot of supports. It's not 100% necessary, but you need, need, need levels. You cannot be level 11 in a game like this and hope to do anything. You need those skills max to have an impact, and that just wasn't the case here. All right, now on to Lambert. All right, Lambert, you get the Golden Dick Award. You have titanium balls and solid 24 karat dong. You, you, you just win forever, my man. You uh, you walked out the front door today, sun on your face. And God himself descended from heaven to give you a handshake. You you just didn't have any opposition. Yeah, let me tell you what this Completely is. This is confidence. Lambert bet on himself this game. Going going out early as Wraith King is nine times out of ten. It's suicidal, especially with somebody like, you know, you have like the Necro, you have the Bloodseeker Grimstroke combo. But he said, you know what? No, I'm doing I'm farming well enough and they're behind enough. I can come out whenever he wants. He came out really early by Wraith King standards, and he was still just clapping cheeks anyway, which is very yep. rare. That backfires ninety nine times out of a hundred, not today. And I tell you something. It's really fitting that Skeleton King's got, like, laser eyes by default, because that's what Lambert was doing 80% of this game. Right. On Can I Mikkel give the award out for Mikkel? Oh, oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Go the ahead. Comeback King Award. You know, the, uh... It really, like I said, Mikkel, 
laned really poorly against Sakanka. No two ways about it. Konka pretty much dumpstered the guy. Uh, last hit wise, he really took Mikkel out. But unlike Iceman, who was unable to really parlay that into success in the mid game, Mikkel was able to parlay what he had to pretty good effect there. You know, like I said, the kills that Mikkel got were by and large a lot more impressive than the, the ganks that Iceman went out and got. And even though he was playing from behind Iceman, Early on in the net worth race, he still felt it felt like had a pretty considerably larger impact. And again, you know, what we called at the top of the game. I think he gets the comeback hit award. What do you think? Well stated. Well stated. It's actually something along I was going to give him. I was going to give him the underdog award, but you named it better than I did. Now over on Matt with Axe, I got to say, uh, it was looking really dicey with uh, how tradey your lane was initially. Really back and forth, really sketchy as to whether or not you'd be able to survive into late game. But, whew, prove me wrong. You got the, uh, you got the sure showed me award. <laughs> I was doubting you. Not going not gonna to lie. You sort of uh, had me concerned for the late game. Pressure applied in the right places, uh, holding off on the blink actually seemed to play into your favor after a while, so kudos. And now we have Magician over on Snapfire. Gotta say, you get the best cheerleader award. You're in the back line, you're telling your friends what they can and can't do, and you're giving them artillery fire if, uh, <laughs> if they need it. Those ults were very powerful, impactful, good deterrent. I'd say nuclear deterrent award, but it wasn't like they were trying to avoid fighting you over on Lone Sniper Theory. It was more that the second you started firing, they all tried to clear out, and half the time it didn't work. Right. I do gotta say, I don't know if... I, I know people are like, oh, get the Wraith packed on pause 4 because tanky pause 3 stinky or whatever. But, like, I don't know if, if Snapfire is the one to get the Wraith packed on. I feel like Snap is going to be too far away from fights most of the time. And uh, over on Pages, over on Dazzle, I'm going to give you the prestigious Spy Laugh Taunt Award. Because that is basically what you were doing every single time someone tried to kill someone on your team. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Pages playing the Spy Laugh Taunt life this game. Fucking fantastic. Pardon my language, but I gotta say, that was just a magical experience. I'm That's sorry, it. Lone Sniper Theory. That's they got it. demolished. For the crime of swearing on a Christian podcast, or cast, not podcast. For the crime of swearing on a Christian cast, I sentence you to eternal damnation until week seven. Dang. How will I Now you're supposed survive? to say, no! No? 